G'day. Hello there. I'm Ozzy Robbo. I'm this gent. And welcome to an episode where we are at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween. Yeah, finally, uh, we're getting to experience Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party, and it's a busy one tonight. But it's hopefully keeping dry. We've got our guides ready. We've got our bag with all our bits in. Let's go. So when you first get to Magic Kingdom, you're allowed in from four o'clock onwards. That gives you access to the Magic Kingdom as a whole. Um, so it means you can get a head start on snacks and rides. Uh, but we've come here about sort of half a So the first thing you're going to do when you get to Magic Kingdom is you're going to get your little wristband. And that gets you in from four o'clock onwards. So you can do get access to the rides and snacks, get a head start. Then if you go down the right hand side of Town Hall, you can basically go and get your uh, trick or treat bag and you'll see those because there'll be lots of posts which will be little posts which tells you where all the trick and treat points are so i think that's what we're going to do now there's also some really nice statues especially made for the event so we have our bag so we're in the tomorrowland terrace uh, they guide you all the way down here and that's where you get your first pick up of sweets apparently these are supposed to be quite nice ones hi, hi happy halloween have fun thank you very much cheers so i think first off before the event really kicks off we're going to try some treats First up, uh, Witcher's Brew from Casey's Corner, which looks interesting. What have we got? So we've got a Pain and Panic footlong all beef hot dog, which is all beef footlong hot dog topped with sweet and spicy onion relish and spicy cheese flavored snacks, Cheetos essentially. That's $13.99 before tax. Then we've also got the Winifred's Elixir of Youth, which let's face it, I need it. Black tea slushy with kiwi foam and Winifred chocolate piece. That's $6.49. Got that hot. <laughs> Oh wow, yeah, definitely kiwi. Oh, that is quite nice. I'm not much of a kind of iced tea drinker type thing. Right, so go on, get your, get your mouth right in there. Yeah, definitely, definitely taste the kiwi. Kiwi, it's really strong kiwi flavor. Someone's gonna have a green beard. <laughs> I actually quite like the slushy part of it. I'm quite It's a frozen drink, but it's got no real discernible flavour. It's just sugar. Sweet. I can taste it like a slight tea kind of hint, but... I'm just getting frozen Coke, really, I think. It's not it even does, Coke, though. No. Like, like frozen a, berry. Yeah. Berry drink. Frozen berry drink. We're sharing this one because it's rather large. There's a lot of flavour going on there. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had a flaming hot Cheeto, so I can feel the spice going off in that. There's also like a burger sauce on there as well. I think it's burger sauce. Yeah, it's like, like onions and stuff, yeah. Yeah. This is not one that you can hold by hand. Or I challenge anybody to be able to do that. Reserving judgment, but yeah, there's definitely like a... You get the crunch from the Cheeto. Getting a bit of heat at the moment, but I think it might be an after effect. Onions, very strong. Better than I thought it was going to be. The flaming hot Cheeto burns for a while. Yeah. So Darren, what was your final evaluation of the food? Okay, let's start with the good. Um, the elixir, when I first elixir, I really like that. I'm going to give that four Kenobis. Um, the uh, pain and panic, as much as I love the characters from Hercules, didn't like the hot dog. I'm going to give that one and a half. The, che the Cheetos for me were just, they threw it off too much. And the onions gave it a weird taste as well. So the drink was really nice. Um, I, I thought it didn't, look, it didn't look very appealing in terms of the blackness and the green, but actually the flavours are really good, so a uh, really nice drink. And um, the hot dog, yeah, we don't have flaming hot Cheetos. Maybe there are some sort of thing like that in the UK, but I've never, uh, we don't eat that kind of stuff. So it made it too hot, and the, the bun fell apart, so the whole thing was a bit of a disaster. I didn't, I, I thought it was, some of the flavours were okay in there, the sweetness of the uh, onions and the sauce, so I'll give it a two and a half shrimps and a barbie. And uh, four shrimps and a barbie for the drinks. Now are you looking any younger? Am I looking any younger? Neither is looking any younger, oh, especially well. this heat. So I'm taking one off for that then. So Darren? Yes. Tonight is a Halloween uh, event. As part of the Halloween uh, festivities, people dress up in costume. Yeah, and we're seeing some really good ones tonight. Really, really good ones. And what have you dressed up as? Uh, Dale. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and Turn around. So, where did you get this hat from? 
The hat is from Tokyo Disney that we had imported two years ago, three I years, think it was ago? Four years ago. Four years ago, when we were originally were supposed to be coming to uh, visit for the spooky season. Um, and then the shirt that was from 2019 uh, when they had a, a release of Rescue Rangers merch out. And I managed to get the shirt and matching sort of uh, bag that came with it. It was a lounge fly bag. Um, I think I bought it on import as well. Shorts are by Uniqlo. <laughs> Trainers are by Adidas. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, it's Rescue Rangers all the way, baby. So, continuing the theme, I guess. Let's have a look at that place. Uh, where did you get the hat from? So I'm Chip. <laughs> As part of Chip's uh, costume, or Rescue Rangers costume, he has a whole Indiana Jones theme, so I just got some dodgy Indiana Jones cap or hat off uh, Amazon in the UK. And Tokyo Disney for the and Tokyo Disney head slash body. For the head slash body. And then Darren just made this uh, design real quick for the t-shirt. Yeah, so we've got because a, did that on t, t public. An aviation leather jacket would be too way too hot to be wearing in the Florida heat. Yeah, I, we, we, we gave up on that idea. And to be honest, these hats are actually quite hot. And so hot. they won't be going on for very long. Photos only. Because uh, they're very, very thick and very, very hot. They're like Not really ideal for the Florida <laughs> weather, which is probably why they never sold them here. <laughs> good start. That was a good handful of the game. Good handful. Considering what we heard about how much they're given out. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to be Disneyland, but yeah, I can get over that. Right, let's go and get uh, a special bit of uh, corn on the so top. Next up, we are going to be we decided to hold out on pirates for a bit, a uh, bit of a queue. Uh, so we've gone for the Pecos Bills almond sweet corn cake, which is almond vanilla cake drizzled in icing, topped with candy corn. And the Cadaver Dans are playing over by the Crunchy Bear Jamboree. It's kind of crazy how much this looks like corn on the cob. It's even got like a sort of like a burnt end bit and like, yeah, let's have a go. Oh, is it tough? No, it's not. It just goes straight through. Is it corn or is it cake? <laughs> so actually, basically you've got some yellow cake um, with fondant on top. We actually, I well, I like candy corn because it tastes like um, fudge to me, but just a nice kind of fondant sponge cake, really. It tastes really almondy. It's quite dense, yeah, it's very almondy. An almond yellow cakey kind of very, very dense. It's for definitely for two. I've got a sweet tooth and even I would struggle with this. It is very dense, very, very dense. It's definitely a huge almond flavor there as well. Yeah. It's very well made, looks great, but I'd give it maybe three and a half shrimps on a barbie. I would, I would say the same, three and a half uh, Kenobis. Mainly because it is, like say, the, the dense, the, the sweetness of the um, icing is actually really nice. But there's a lot of it, which should be for the price you're paying. How much was it? Six dollars and seventeen cents yeah. with tax. There's definitely enough there. I would say with most of the things we tried up to now, there's enough there for, for sharing. So you can get more treats to share. You don't even need to buy, buy one each. So with it being a spooky season event, um, they basically will be changing some of the attractions to Halloween themed. First up we're going to try for is Pirates of the Caribbean, which they actually inject live actors, live pirates into the actual set pieces. So I'm really looking forward to that. They inject them into the set pieces. Inject them, yes, they inject them. <laughs> a real one? Yeah, I like it. Wow. Yeah. 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 So we just got off our we just got off our first ride of the day, which was Pirates well, of the evening. Yeah. Which was Pirates of the Caribbean. Halloween version. Halloween edition. 
Yeah, so they add a uh, few uh, pirate actors on there, and it's actually a really nice addition. Could they could have really gone for it? Apparently, all pirates come from Ireland, though. Yeah, apparently. Um, none from the south of England, which is generally where you find. Uh, but yeah, and then as we came out, just under the Adventureland sign, where it's like a big wooded roof, loads of bats, <laughs> like tons of bats. Disney magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. Thanks, Brigal. Thank Very much. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, Livelink, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's a tick. <laughs> Go there, selfie. Perfect. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, never thought I'd be ticking off the country bears on my bucket list. Um, even got a kiss from one. <laughs> Very audible kiss. I still think it's uh, an unused, untapped, or under underappreciated uh, IP. Yes. For Disney. We, but then we're old, I guess. They like the chipmunks, what can we say? <laughs> Farewell, mortals. Enjoy your tour. Happy you to Tell the ghosts from the mortals down here. So, Darren, we just got off the uh, Haunted Mansion ride. How was it? Well, we got many photo opportunities uh, because we just kept stopping for long periods of time. So, I counted five times. I heard yeah, someone just say five. six, but I think it was five. No, I think it was five. We're currently stuck on Haunted Mansion. We've been here for about five minutes. Yes. We may die here. We may die here. Uh, but yeah, it stopped in some, apart from the last one, which was just as it, you get to the exit, every other stop was actually quite nice to see something in front of you. The first one was like five minutes, that, yeah. was, that felt like of a, knock, of a knocking door. Even the second one with, in front of Madame Leota was about four minutes, three minutes maybe. But yeah, yeah that was good, I uh, really enjoyed that. So now, oh also, the actors, sorry, the ghosts before you go in was really cute. Uh, she was yeah. really, she was like um, Blanche from um, Golden Girls kind of vibe. Allow me to introduce you. Oh, you. foolish man. It is my severe pleasure to introduce to you one of our permanent residents and my master's niece, Lady Renata. Hi. <laughs> oh, good evening, you beautiful mortal. Thank you for coming to visit tonight. My little heart's so happy. I'm a little ghost popping blood. I'm feeling those sympathetic vibrations. How cute y'all look. Those little mouths. Ah, I do like the extra. Oh, I don't understand the premise behind the mouths. No. Yet, you look adorable. <laughs> Perhaps you like emulating a large room. Who knows? Uh, Southern Bell. But now we're going to go to Secret Hollow and we're going to try our first ever funnel cake. We've never had funnel cake. The rescue rangers are here. <laughs> <laughs> Even chipmunks need treats. <laughs> and they're come. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Happy Halloween. Cheers. Have thank you. Day. Have a good one. get some of our first ever funnel cake but over here oh pretty 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 oh and the reflection works so well I'm loving the lighting they've got tonight so this is a hocus pocus uh, themed treat from Sleepy Hollow uh, it's funnel cake with chocolate ice cream um, cookie crumbs and gummy worms and then you've got Billy from, um, he's one of the characters from the original Hocus Pocus. And he's on a little white chocolate piece on top. Um, and it's served warm. Served warm. And how much was it, Rob? 
Eight ninety nine before tax. So this is one of the pricier snacks, I would say. I can actually hear hocus pocus happening now. Very difficult to eat. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. First, first time trying funnel cake, what does it taste like? Like a fried batter? Like a donut without sugar? It's not very sweet. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it tastes very much like a donut that yeah. doesn't have sugar on. But it's way too chocolatey because you've got this crumbled chocolate on top, which is like a crumbled Oreo. And then you have the chocolate ice cream as well. So, um, yeah. It's a very, very chocolatey dessert. It reminds me of the little donuts you get fried at fairgrounds and stuff, you know, like the way you get like a bag of... Right. But not as sugary as a thought it's going to be. I personally find it quite bland. Yeah, a little let down by the funnel cake. Yeah. Not my favourite dessert I've ever had, to be honest. Maybe two shrimps on a barbie? And gummy. I mean, the gummy snake, some worms are... They actually add some sweetness to it, which not. Over inflatable stick means more treats. Thank you very much. Cheers. I love a tea party, don't you? And just behind me, there he is. I think Rob's had too many sweets. I don't think anything like this might be a bit excessive for him now. This is the bit where I open the door and fall flat on my face. <laughs> Maybe I've done that a little bit. <laughs> well, it wasn't going very fast. Like you were going half the speed of some of the other people. Well, I've only got one hand. <laughs> so it felt I, like I was going why, fast. What was the other one doing? Holding the camera. Of course. Oh, yeah. I don't know what it and means. Now you're flashing. Yeah, I think we'll have to get one of these before we finish. It lights up quite nice though, I like that. It's pretty. Although we might be able to get that from home, so. So, Senor Darren? Yes. Or Senior Darren? Si. Uh, how was that for you? Uh, it's all about shake, rattle, and roll. Absolute pitch black from the very start, so it's really quite unnerving when you go up and you, you think you can remember the bits that you, you know, waste on falling and stuff. No. Oh my god, that's knocked me around. I mean, all I have to say is it's as painful in the dark as it is when the lights are on. So as you can see, we spent a lot of our evening trying food and just having experiences in general. We didn't do any character meets because the queues were way too long. And to be honest, uh, a lot of the characters we've met before in different 
geysers and it, yeah it didn't warrant waiting an hour or less <laughs> to sort of just meet them again so we decided to do the route that many other people have sort of said is best to do is leave all the big spectacular shows to the end of the night get all your experiences and your rides and your food out of the way at the first half um, and I'll let you know how that went first up was Disney's not so spooky spectacular this is my first time actually seeing um, a fireworks show for Halloween. I've never watched any of the ones previously on other vlogs from other years, and this is our first uh, time at Mickey's Not So Scary. Um, I was actually really impressed, and uh, well, the crowd seemed really into it. I was quite far back, but pretty central, um, sort of, uh, I'd probably say about 100, 100 yards from Casey's Corner, and I got to see the whole thing. It was bigger than I thought it was going to be. And uh, I actually was more impressed with this show than I was The Enchantment. But some of you would argue that's not difficult. I don't mind Enchantment, it's okay to a certain degree, but I really, really like this Halloween spectacular. The spectacular starts in a really nice way. It, after a little introduction, it goes to a Jack Skellington. And for the first like, minute or so, you're trying to guess how they got Jack Skellington on a stage being so fully animated and you know in person. Um, it looked like to me that it was a, someone in a blackout suit behind him basically doing some really good puppeteering and it worked really well even from a distance. As ever the visuals are really good on the castle, this one was really imaginative especially um, with the different villains and the storyline, it was really cute. Um, but again the fireworks themselves were absolutely amazing and huge, bigger than life. So by about 10 o'clock in the evening I was very tired, I was hot and I wasn't really in the mood to be watching fireworks and standing in a bunch of crowded people. So I went off to, uh, I went off to Tomorrowland and bought myself frozen lemonade, strawberry lemonade. And once I'd finished that, the fireworks were going on at this stage. I then went over to the People Mover, had a lap at the People Mover and uh, decided that was enough for me for the evening and headed back to the hotel. Decided to miss the crowds, uh, getting the bus back and uh, yeah, just chill back in the hotel room with some air conditioning. He was Halloween pooped, Halloween out. After a short break and uh, quite a few people left. Basically there are um, repeated showings, especially if the weather's good, there are repeated showings of these shows. So some people will have caught them earlier on. I was waiting for the Hocus Pocus Villain Spectacular, which um, for me has a little sort of warm place in my heart. Um, for, for me in the 90s, I worked in a cinema for many, many years and Hocus Pocus came out. That shows how old I am. And we got to promote it um, as a small Disney film um, and we got to dress up and we got to decorate the cinema and it was really fun so it really has a good place in my heart and i wanted to see the spectacular i wish this is the one where i wish i'd moved closer we did i did sort of get to shift a little bit closer however um it was still pretty busy um, but i got a good view it just would have been nice to have seen all the characters the sanderson sisters look they were great um as were all the villains who trot out throughout the uh, show um it's quite it's quite a sweet show it's kind of funky and um yeah try and get a bit closer than i did uh, and you'll get to see a bit more after a bit of a wait um it was announced that boo to you was taking place um, I was hoping, originally the plan was I was going to go down to sort of um, Frontierland because we've seen parades before and they always look really good in Frontierland because it's not sort of a big wide open space and generally you get a really good view of everything. However, just by luck I managed to be right smack in front of the castle as it turns around the corner from Adventureland. Um, it was actually quite a nice spot. and. It, I will say, it feels like forever that it takes to get to uh, that part of the Magic Kingdom, the sort of the hub. Um, people were just waiting and it was tired. I think people were tired by that point. There were kids crying, etc. But I found a nice spot. Cast members were great, um, as they were all night. And this is the big one that I was waiting for because for years I've you know, seen it. I've heard about Boo to You. I've seen it in various vlogs and um, I was just ready to hear that repetitive music sort of get drummed into my skull and sure enough it did and it was really bright it was really lovely um, I would still say the fireworks uh, the fireworks spectacular was probably my favorite part of the evening 
Um, it seemed to get the biggest reaction, but it was also really cool seeing um, all the different characters right there. A complete di different mixture of characters, including the Country Bears that we met earlier. And of course, Chip and Dale, um, all the gang were there. And yeah, it was a really nice way to finish the evening. Um, but let's talk about our timings and why we decided to do it later in the evening. As with any late Disney event or after hours event, there are lots of things to do and see. Um, I would always advise if you're going to one of these, yeah, definitely prioritize what your favorite things are to do. Personally, I wanted to just basically have a bit more of a chilled uh, sort of situation when it came to the shows, i.e. a lot of the people will have left People with kids who are not willing to let them go beyond midnight are generally going to usher out of the park by this point, which means there's a lot more room for everybody else to enjoy it. And um, yeah, I would definitely favor that sort of setup rather than trying to get all the first shows in early in the evening. Luckily this night we didn't have any bad weather, we didn't have any rain, it was really good. Uh, so it was perfect for that. So I managed to get pretty much everything I wanted to do all in one evening because we did food first, we did rides and attractions, we walked, we talked, we went around the whole of the Magic Kingdom and all that before we got to do any of the shows and the shows were quite a nice way to finish off the like last hour or so of the uh, the event. Um, yeah, highly recommended doing the shows if you can later in the evening. And so ends our first ever Mickey's not so scary. What can I say? It was very full on. Met some really nice people, including some like-minded uh, chipmunks. <laughs> Never thought we'd see that. We had a really fun night. It is tiring. It is a long one. We'd like to know if you went to Mickey's not so scary, whether it be this year or other years, what has been your highlight or what has been your favorite sort of food item? This year, I, I was actually personally impressed with quite a lot of the food items on offer, even though they look disgusting, that some of them were really knockout. So we'd like to know what you've experienced with Nutmeek is not so scary, whether it be this year or other years. Um, what would you like to see change maybe at Mickey's Not So Scary? I know some things could be tweaked. I personally was really surprised at how much I loved just walking around Magic Kingdom with the event on. We'd love to hear your opinions on Mickey's Not So Scary because it's not for everybody. It's not Halloween Horror Nights after all. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Give us that thumbs up. It really, really helps us um, sort of grow the channel and gets more people to see our stuff and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Bye. So the morning after the night before and looking at the bags, we had two bags and we didn't do too badly at all. Um, got a bit of everything in there. So thank you very much Disney for giving us a really good night. We're both very tired now, we've lost our voices. Um, but yeah, really good night.